Tonight, we uh, want to, you know, just really dig deep into understanding who we are as individuals and how that then plays out in terms of our business results. I see quite often times where people get frustrated because maybe they're not moving as quick as other people, or maybe they're not getting deals over the line that someone else might get over the line. And they try to figure it out. But really, what we need to do first is find out who we are. And uh, this is something that I do quite regularly and um, have just recently done another deep dive into it. So I think it's very um, topical and important to, to go through it whilst it's fresh in my mind as well. But, um, you know, we can, learn, we can learn new skill sets for sure. You know, we can all learn new strategy. We can all get more knowledge. Uh, we can all learn how to sell better, how to uh, put systems and processes, how to operate technology. So all those skill sets we can learn. However, underneath the hood, is our ultimate DNA of who we are as individuals and more at the point, how we operate on a day-to-day -day basis based on you know, how our minds work and how we are driven by certain things. Obviously, everybody is totally different. So there's a couple of um, tests that I do regularly. Uh, probably when I say regularly, once a year, maybe once every, every six months, depending on um, what I'm wanting. But um, has anybody here heard of the Colby A test or the Clifton Strengths Finders test? Just show of hands if you have. No. Okay, good. So you're all in for a treat. <laughs> so um, let me just show you. Um, so I'm, I'll go through my Colby A test and, and my Clifton Strength Finders test. These are individual to me. They're not going to give you any basis of who you are or how you can operate. But what I want to show you is how much information you can get from these tests. So hopefully you leave this and you go and invest in them yourselves and you do them yourselves. So they're about $40 each. Um, and for me, it's, you know, you spending 90 to 100 pounds on finding out who you are. And also then the real nuts and bolts of it come from your strengths and your weaknesses and understanding how you then put them into your businesses. And it'll also highlight, and quite often you read these things and you smile or you laugh because you're like, that is so me. And, you know, they really absolutely nail it. To give you an idea, the, um, the Colby A test has been done by over a million people. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a newer test. The Strength Finder test has been around for 50 years. I think there's something like 12 or 13 million people have been through that. So there's a lot of data that have gone through these tests um, to make them worthwhile. So um, let me just get my, uh, we'll start with the Colby test first. Go. Uh, so your, the Colby A test basically rates you um, based on four domains. So they class it as fact finder, your follow through, quick start, and your implementer. Now, all of, all of us will have different numbers and, you know, in, in different segments. So what you do is you basically go through and you fill out 50 questions, and then it basically tells you, um, where, you where you sit within the test. So for me, I, um, I like to simplify things. Uh, I like to maintain things. Uh, I like to innovate and I like to restore. So they're kind of the key things that have come out with my Colby strengths. So you can see here, you kind of get your counteract, you react and you initiate action. So as you can see here, I'm very much a quick starter, just dive in and get it done, initiate action. Um, my follow through probably could do with some work. And, and, you know, and this is stuff that really shows up all the time, but you don't really pay enough attention to it until you actually analyze where you're at with things. I um, So basically, uh, my result is a 3484. And, um, you know, it's got nothing to do with your social situations. It's got nothing to do with that. It is purely based on the questions and how you operate. Um, so I... Um, I get tired of questions. Why aren't you more specific? Why didn't you document what happened? And really because when I get bogged down in details, I don't see the big picture. Uh, I'm too busy trying to get a solution to a problem than I am to try and write it down and 
figure it all out first. And this plays good and bad in my scenario. Um, good example is it means I can move quickly. Bad example is I probably don't read my conveyance and contracts in enough detail to actually wonder if I'm going to get caught out on anything. So, you know, I do have to be careful with things like that. But again, I don't want to get bogged down with, you know, reading them all. I kind of trust solicitors to do that. That's just a simple example of stuff. Um, I sit in kind of this section here, the conative. So my skill sets are very much doing, driving, instinct, necessity, mental energy, innate force, and talents. Um, that's kind of where I sit in the main. I, uh, it then goes through kind of um, your natural strength in each action. So, um, you know, as a fact finder, I distill information. Um, you know, I estimate, I condense the data, I approximate the particulars, um, you know, as follow through, I tend to package things together that fit, I adjust procedures, uh, monitor policies, uh, a quick start, I create a sense of urgency on everything. I'm very much a person that puts things together at the last minute. So my own urgency is creating that diary task with the deadline on it, and that forces me to take action. So, um, and then implementer, um, you know, I test ingredients, I fix moving parts, you know, I convert spaces, so I might rearrange things and stuff like that. So this then goes through, and it basically gives you, um, you know, what you should be doing more of and what you shouldn't be doing in each of the areas that you're in. So, um, you know, I should summarize, I should abbreviate, I should make exceptions, you know, I should just get to the bottom line point straight away. I shouldn't get bogged down in details. I shouldn't justify my reasons to anybody, you know, because then it, it, it plays against you, you see. So what we're trying to find here is what we're really good at. And really, this will play into any of the JV situations that you're going to potentially need to create in your property business. You want to, you know, in an ideal world, you'd want to get everyone in the JV partnership to run these type of tests and then work out whether yours are actually a fit or not. And also who has what strengths and who can bring what to the table. Um, again, you've got your do's and your don'ts on, um, you know, your follow through, your do's and your don'ts on your, uh, which topics that again, this, uh, your stability, uh, innovation, and, um, and again, your do's and your don'ts on this. So um, as you can see, what it then does is it has these, these color pyramid, which uh, they call ergs, which is basically 100 colors. And it, it basically tells you where you spend uh, the majority of your energy. And, you know, it appreciates time. Once it's gone, it's gone. But, you know, where, where I spent. So I spend, as you can see here, 42% of my energy in innovating. So that's, that's kind of where I'm hanging out most of the time. I'm coming up with new ideas. I'm innovating things, you know. And that fits very well for my current role now in the business, which is very much just working on the business, not in the business. So I am innovating all the time. I'm coming up with new ideas. I'm coming up with new processes, new systems. And, and you know, that, and that suits me um, very well. So, you know, as you can see here, it says here, you know, your uh, mental energy, human, this gives you the same potential power as any CEO or a rock star. <laughs> but uh, I'll take the CEO bit. I'm definitely not a rock star. <laughs> um, so you, really what you want to do is understand how it plays out for you. Um, trusting your sense of time. So this is basically uh, when I use my strengths um, to like the absolute best, my MO as they call it. So I'll start solving problem and process by brainstorming. Um, I'll typically get that on a board and I like to visualize and draw it out. Um, I'll look for ways to fit the project into a system. I think one thing I have probably relied on and one thing that has helped me get to the success I've had so quickly is my systems and processes that I've wrapped around all areas of the business. So for me, um, this was quite an interesting one for me because it actually, this report's telling me that I am a systems type of guy. So that fits in nicely with what I've done uh, and why I think they're so important. Um, I then check the strength and durability of, you know, materials would be your staff, your systems, your processes, you know, everything that is, is in everything that you're doing. Um, and then I, I, I like to just summarize stuff and get to the bottom line. I don't like 
to go into the detail. Um, you know, not bothered about thrashing things out for hours. I would rather just get to the detail and just take action. Whereas some people might need to get all the detail laid out and really process the information, potentially sleep on it for two to three days and then make a decision, you know? So what you have to understand is, is who you are and how you can play against your strengths. Um, and then give you some tips on um, what you should be doing. And, you know, again, how to look after yourself as well. So, you know, for me, after working intensely, my deadlines take time to do nothing. I very much don't slow down enough. You know, I, I very, very rarely take time off. But, um, you know, that's just the way I am. Um, so it then goes through all these. Uh, it goes through any relationships as well and how you can do stuff, uh, how you create win-win relationships. That works well there. Um, and then we have the um, career considerations. Obviously, you're all entrepreneurs. You want to build your own businesses. But these will give you a bit of an idea of, you know, where you will fit in in the business. So, you know, some of your, some of your strengths here might come out that you're actually very much a doer, getting the nitty gritty of the business, you know, and that could mean that that's where your strength is. And then as your business grows, you might actually need to employ somebody to be the CEO or actually run the operations for you, you know, because you're the, you're better getting in and, and doing all the nitty gritty. So um, it's a really, really good report. And something that what I do is um, I print them off and I kind of highlight the bits that really stand out to me. And then I put them on a list. And, and then I'll look at them and, and I'll go into them even deeper and I'll kind of get them down to sort of top three, top five, and then really feel like how can they fit into my world and my business and how can I use them to help me get stronger and better. We then have the, um, the strength finder test. Yeah. So this one is a lot more detailed and um, it basically analyzes 34 areas of a human being. And it, um, it's amazing the results that come out of these things. Um, so this basically has it in one to a thingy. So this, this column here, the little column, these are basically my 10 strengths. And then these are things that will show up from time to time, but don't necessarily influence who I am and what I do and how I get results. So they then break it down into four themes. So as well as your 34 different um, elements, they have your executing theme, your influencing theme, your relationship building theme, and your strategic thinking theme. So you can kind of say, you know, execute obviously how you do things, how quickly you make things happen, influencing how you take charge of situations, how you can be able to persuade people, how well you build relationships or how well you don't build relationships and how well you um, think things through. And then they put each one of these strengths into those four sections. So mine come out as number one, achiever. Number two, futuristic. I very much look into the future a lot. I, um, I, I, I'm always visionizing you know, where I'm going to be in a year, five years, 10 years. Um, it's just something that is obviously part of me. I'm very competitive. Um, I'm very focused and I'm quite strategic in what I do. And then obviously these are other characteristics of mine, but these are my top five based on the answers. So these tests take about half an hour each. It's just simple questions. You answer, um, I'm more like this or I'm more like this type of situation. Um, so in your achiever, the great thing about this test is as well as like here basically explains who you are, but here it kind of says, you know, these are your action items of, uh, you know, set challenging goals, take advantage of your self-motivation with more ambitious goals every time you finish a project, you know, um, limit your commitments to projects that, you know, don't align. And then it also gives you like your blind spots. And these for me are really important because as well as playing to our strengths, I think we also need to, um, th these aren't your weaknesses. These are just, the, it's basically giving you a warning of what might trip you up if you just concentrate on your strengths. So, um, you know, and for each one of these, there's a, an explanation and then there is, um, you know, your, your vision and then obviously your blind spots. 
So it goes all the way through, explaining them all. And then it basically puts them into uh, the four domains here. So as you can see here, I am very much an influencer as a person. Uh, I have, you know, four of my top 10, sorry, five of my top 10 are sat in that influencer section. Uh, surprisingly, I'm not a very good relationship builder, um, according to this. But, um, you know, that's just, you know, as you say here, like, you know, empathy, um, you know, related to harmony, individualization, included adaptability. Uh, I am very much focused on what I want to achieve. And um, that's kind of, you know, just who I am, I guess. Um, but, you know, looking at the blind spots of, you know, if I go back to my sort of, you know, some of the relationship building ones up here. Um, so that's an influencer, a strategic. Actually, I don't have any up here. Um, it will tell me what my blind spots are for them. And, and there's about four or five different ports you actually get with this. So you get, there's another three reports, which is your insights guide as well. Um, so again, it, it goes through your insight, what makes you stand out, goes through all of this. And then from that, it asks you good questions to be able to pull out what, what you can do with that information, how you can use it, how you can, you know, make yourself produce better, productive, creative, you know, show up more, all that sort of stuff. So you just kind of got to go through them. But once you've got the information, it's then what you do with the information, like anything that we do. So, um, you know, once we've got the information, we then, for me, you, you bring it into your top fives, you highlight it, and then you, you decide what you want to do with that information. So really important uh, reports for me. I think, you know, a lot of people don't investigate themselves. They just go with the day-to-day -day and allow life to take over them. Um, yet you might be wasting so much energy trying to play to one of your weaknesses. You might think it's a strength, but actually it's a weakness. Um, and maybe there's a strength that you're not playing to that you should be playing to. And again, when I mentioned earlier about joint ventures, you should know what your strengths are and you should know what the other person's strengths are and then see how you can benefit each other. Because if you've both got the same strengths, that might not be the best joint venture partnership if all efforts going to be equal. But if you've got different strengths, that might be a much better partnership. So you want to really um, use the information. You, as you can see, you can use it in so many different ways. And, um, and you can really, you know, help one another and kick on. You know, for me, it's, it's something that I do a lot of is investigate who I am, what, what I do, how I do things. And I think the more that you do that, the more you then say no to things and push things aside and, you know, potentially don't do certain tasks. So... It's, um, you know, it is, it is what it is. And um, I would encourage us all to, to take the test. So one is the Colby A test and one is the Gallup Clifton Strengths Finders test. And, um, you know, for me, really important. Is there any questions on that before we dive into Joel's deal? Ryan, when, um, when in your journey did you do those and, and what prompted you to do them? So, um, I first did them five years ago because the original mentorship that I, well, my first ever mentorship that I went on was all about, um, you know, I was coming from a place of not a good mental space. So the first mentorship I was on was all very much about getting shit in order, basically. So to do that, I wanted to, part of it was to find out back then it was just the Colby A test that we did. And obviously, um, that has moved forward somewhat. So um, still working with that mentor five years on. So, um, you know, they've developed as they've got better and bigger and, you know, they've, they've you know, seen more and more students come through and things like that. So, um, so they then added these other tests and they've, you know, tested them. And, but I, I just think any information that you can get from yourself. I mean, one of the things that we regularly do in our uh, mentorship is, is go to, uh, like you would take these tests to your wife to your mom, to your dad, and just say, what do you think? And they mm -hmm. normally read them and turn around and say, that is you. <laughs> You're a prick. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, but, so, no, the, um, you, and also, you can, uh, like, like you, you should always be getting feedback from people that are close to you, but, like, ask for honest feedback, not just, like, blow smoke up your ass feedback. Like, give me some honest feedback 
like, where am I showing up? Where am I not showing up? How can I do better? You know, and even if that's your partner or your wife or whatever, and it's just about being around the house, you know, it can change the way that you then show up at work, show up in everything that you do. And I do, I'm a big believer that, you know, how we, how we show up in everything is pretty much how we'll show up in everything, you know, I'm sorry, how we show up in smaller scenarios would be how we show up in everything. And, um, but for me, it's, I'm, I'm, I don't know what it is about me, but I, I've really got this thing about time. Uh, I've always thought I was going to die quite young. I don't know why, a bit morbid, but that's just always been in my mind. So I guess that's why maybe I run at a million miles an hour because I just feel like I haven't got much time. So I always look for ways that I can save pockets of time or buy myself time back. But I think that's massively sort of benefited the results in a way because it, it just accelerates everything. And I, I guess I've understood the power of leveraging other people and buying time, um, you know. So that's, um, you know, again, just just where you come from and how your journey goes. And, you know, for the sake of $40, it's worth finding out who you are, you know. And if you do it once a year, then, you know, and, and keep the results so you can see if there's any changes. Typically, there's not that many changes. Um, there are certain changes, and you will start to see the patterns change. But in the main, you are who you are. Have you got your hand up for a question? Just unmute. Uh, bottom left. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I I pressed the wrong button. Um, yes, I think you just answered my question. I was going to ask you whether you've noticed uh, any changes over the years with the tests that you've done. Um, and also a, a bit of a, a tricky question, which is, it's a bit chicken and egg. So you say... You, you characterized yourself with being innovative and, and all of these, which is fine. But to say that uh, you refine those characteristics, don't you, as you work and as you um, focus more and more on your goals and, you know, I want to go that way, so therefore I'm going to get better at it. Um, so it's a bit of a, a vicious cycle, isn't it? So the the you know, the test comes back saying you're very good at cooking. So the more you cook, the better you'll be, obviously, isn't it? It's a bit like that, isn't it? And, and on that basis, have you noticed any major changes? So there's a, there's a test I've done recently called the 16 personalities. I don't know whether yeah. you've heard of it. Yeah. And it, it's equally detailed. Um, and in other conversations with other people, I've heard more than one person saying, so it kind of um, it classes you as, uh, introvert or extrovert and many other qualities or characteristics but um, I've heard more than one person saying they used to be introverts and they're now extroverts and vice versa which to me I'm an introvert and I, to me this is just beyond belief how on earth can you become an extrovert I mean surely you might be able to gain skills on that but it's like you say you know the essence is there and that's how you are isn't it yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, you can always um, like skill sets, you know, becoming yeah. better at sales, becoming, you, you know, you can always yeah. rewire your brain. I'm a big believer in that, you know, and that's something that I think you do go through as you get more experienced in, in anything, in, even in just life, you know. Um, yes. You know, I think that the older you get, the less chill, you know, you become much calmer, don't you? You don't let as many things irritate you. Just, you know, whereas when you're young and wound up, you want to fight the world and, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I think, you know, experience you can't buy. But um, for me, it's about really understanding, like, where I can be the most effective yeah. with every single minute of every single day that I'm in that sort of mindset of producing and creating and operating. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think you naturally, um, you know, like there was, there was something, um, I think it was in the strengths one, it was like, uh, one of my things was, you know, find a, put a, put an hour of time in your diary every single day to just focus on your tasks. Well, I'm not sure if you've watched the um, win the week yet, but for years I've done that anyway, because that's just part of me. I've always blocked like yep. an hour, an hour and a half to do my important task every day. So there's stuff like that that shows up, but then that just, I think gives you a bit of confidence that I'm actually on the right track here. I'm already it's doing reassuring, it. isn't it? Yes, yes I know what you mean. That they're saying that is you know positive towards you know what you're doing. So 
But it'd be really interesting if you just could all do them and then, you know, if we could come back on and just have a look at some, some alternatives and see yeah. what shows up or maybe just ping your results in the uh, Telegram group and, you know, just it, obviously if you want to, you don't have to share, but, um, you know, each one of them is individual. Like, I think they say no one's Colby A test is the same. Like yeah. every single person in the world is different. So, um, you know, and I'd imagine with the strength finder as well, that's probably unique because there's so many questions and there's, I think, five different variables to each question. So it's probably, I don't know how many million trillion percent to one it is of, of like being the same, but they're probably very unique as well. So obviously you'll get similarities. My Colby A actually shows up very similar to my uh, mentor, which I, I find quite interesting. Um, like very similar I think we're one digit different away um, oh, wow. so very similar traits um, which I'll be happy if I get the success he's had that's for sure so uh, <laughs> but um, but yeah so please do them uh, you know invest in yourself and do them and uh, you know you, you'll see the benefit of it and then put them into your businesses put them into your life and and, and use them to power you forward really yes I will definitely Super. Anybody else on the test before we move on to Joel? No? Awesome. Joel, the show is yours. Do you want to... Um, so you've got a deal. This potential so, yeah. service accommodation deal. It's, yeah, so it's, uh, it's a bit different to the order, right? Um, and I appreciate it's uh, jumping in at the deep end a little bit, you know, um, but it's it's a bit of an attractive proposition, so it seems to be. Uh, and I'm struggling to kind of input this kind of stuff into the deal, deal analyzer. Okay. Uh, so I just thought I'd kind of, I can run through the figures in brief, or uh, I can share my screen and show you stuff, or... Um, let, let, sh I, share, I, share your screen, and I'll, um, let me just enable that. And then I'll talk, I'll kind of just talk us through it, and um, we can hopefully come to a conclusion. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just give a bit of um, a bit of a brief on the on the side. So uh, on the on the on the building, should I say? Um, one moment. So I don't know if you can see this uh, this building here. Yeah. So, so what it is? It's a, it's an old building, an old church uh, that uh, developers turned into a service accommodation. Um, it's a it's a business what's up and running at the moment. Um, it's opened in July last year um, mm -hmm. because it's got nine bedrooms, seven bathrooms. It can sleep twenty five people. Um, they've had quite a lot of publicity on it. Um, if you can see quite some of the pictures, what they've done is really kitted out, really nice uh, in nice grounds. It's used on corporate. Uh, training days quite a lot and stuff like that. Um, so they get big bookings. Um, so the, the weekly kind of night, well, over the last uh, six months, uh, so from July to December, it's averaged around 25 grand a month uh, turnover. So weeknights, they charge around 1,970 and then it's about 2,150 weekends. So Average it, it's about two grand a night, give or take. Um, and in the last six months of 2021, uh, it turned over about 148 grand. And it's already got pre bookings um, from 2022 uh, so far this year of 109,000. So it's got a good, good pipeline. Um, yeah. And I can kind of show this information. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a cash flow in business, really, should I say. Um, yeah. it's, it's a bit different, you know. Uh, there's a property manager in place at the moment. They kind of actually run it for the, uh, the current owner and take a percentage of the bookings. Um, they, they organise everything, but I think inevitably the, the profit in the long term would be perhaps to bring that in-house or systemise that or obviously learn a bit from that you know to see if you could increase the margins yeah um but essentially it's just to kind of look at the the figures and see if it does seem uh like it's a deal or not you know um 
So the asking price on this, well, it's listed at 2.6 million. Okay. Which I know is quite steep, a um, bit different, uh, but I just wanted to kind of run some numbers on that. You know, um, I've got so it's like a, it's about an eight and a half times return on the revenue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one two point six. Yeah. So that's the asking price. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be the offer price, but um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so are you in turn? Are you stumped with? Um, whether it'll generate the revenue or whether the building's worth that amount of money, I suppose both really. Because I've I've only kind of, I've not been on the course uh, long, so I'm kind of just I'm I'm literally catching up to these kind of modules now on uh, on Kajabi. Um, yeah. But obviously, I I have kind of started to, to to run through this. You know, this is kind of it, it, um the. Apologies if I'm using this incorrectly to everybody because I've you know I'm I'm, a, I'm I'm not quite that far yet. I've just been I just I've just I've just pulled this in for tonight to be honest, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I would what I was just trying to work out is based on I, I haven't changed none of these figures by the way yet from the tenth work. Um, is based upon the mortgage payment that we'd have to pay on that uh, from the finance that we could achieve. You know, is it worth looking at? You know. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, 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 so assuming you get what. Two two point two million. So you'll probably get well. It's going to be commercial, isn't it? So you think yeah. about sixty five percent loan of value. Yeah, something like that. And I'll spoke to the broker. We can get. Uh, we can either fix it for five years at three point two percent, or we can fix it for ten years at three point seven percent if we wanted to. So there, there's options that we can get. Okay, so three point five. See, so mortgage is about about forty two hundred quid a month, give or take. Yeah. Uh, yeah, give or take. So, um, okay, let's go to uh, open up Airbnb. Uh, yep. Yeah. So I was just taking some notes. I don't know if you guys can still see this or not. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We still got it. Right, just type in there, put the postcode in there. Yep, yeah, one second then. Um, Oh, all right. All right. Click on uh, I'm flexible. And how many guests does it sleep again? Uh, it can do. Um, was it 20? It was 20 something. Was it 15? 20, yeah. 15, 25. Now, okay. So let's just put in. Um, what what's the makeup of the is it nine bedrooms did it say yeah yeah that's right nine bedrooms so uh divided by nine Let, let's put three bed flat so let's just put three guests in there so three adults and just click yep. search so do you know where it is on that map uh i don't apologies no Right, jump on a good just quickly type in Google open Google Maps. Yeah, I'd go to postcode and find out where it is. Yeah, just if you just open Google Maps next to the Airbnb tab, it's the easiest way to do it. Yeah, I'll just chuck the postcode in. Sorry, RG71LG, I think, wasn't it? I think one LD, I think. LD. Yeah. Okay, just right. zoom out. Just zoom out a bit. Just keep zooming. Okay. Uh, just no. flick, back, flick back to Airbnb. Uh, yeah, so, so, uh, so around this kind of area. Yeah. Okay, so that click on that. that just hover over that £200 a night. So that's that one at the top left there. Okay, so that's got 21 reviews. Just zoom out slightly. And just uh, see, so you've got 119, 143, 152, yeah. Okay, so there. So when we look on the Airbnb, we've got two bedrooms, one bedroom, one bedroom, two bedrooms. Um, just go to the left hand side and start and just scroll down slightly. Just all we're doing here is trying to get a bit of an average of the figures. 
That, okay. Nope. So, and, okay. and also you want to be having a look at like where it says one bedroom or two bedroom. Yeah. So kind of see what's going down, but you can kind of see there one bed is at anywhere between 80 and 100 quid. Yeah. And two bedders are about 130s to 150s. Yeah. So that, that I would work on two bedders. So I imagine most of them will probably be, well, most of them probably one bed is actually with a sofa bed, um, maybe. But if you work on 100 quid a night, okay, so go back to your deal analyzer. Yeah. And then go down a bit. Uh, that's it. And then, so weekday nights, and then, yeah, so put 100 in there and probably 125 on a weekend. No, next column. Go back. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Um, weekend nights booked, put eight in there because you're probably booked every weekend. Um, you could leave. Change. Um, put 13 in the weekdays booked. And then that'll be about 70% occupancy across the year. Um, so cleaning fee is, yeah, yeah, I mean, 50 quid turnaround for a room if you're probably not a million miles away if you're going to have a batch because you, you'll probably just have one. You'll have a cleaner that'll be there quite regularly if they've got nine rooms, you know, yeah. they'll almost run like the B&B. &B. So, so I think what I do at the moment is the, the managing agent, uh they live close and it's i believe it's some connection to them and, and they do it all wrapped up within their feet um so that's how it's kind of worked at the moment uh they go in between guests and set it up uh and they, they take a percentage of the bookings because they also kind of do the promotion and stuff at the moment that's that's how it's set up at the moment you know yeah. um yeah but so um so gross revenue on each flat is going to be around let's just say 2300 quid you could say two grand worst case scenario okay um i mean i wouldn't don't i wouldn't change that i'd just leave it just click oh, control right. z yeah um and then i would always put the vat in there because you're going to get VAT registered very quickly on this business so um equals d45 yeah so you've got nothing see where it says 570 on column i yeah just copy the formula over So, I mean, that, that's at 20%. Obviously, that at the minute on hospitality is 12 and a half. It'll probably stay like that for a few years, but you can change that at the top if you want. You can change the 20 to 12.5 12 up in the... Um, I don't mind keeping it at that if, if you want, though, uh, for the time being. So, um, so you've got that. So, your total profit on each one's kicking out at about a grand a month, which is right, really, for an owned... An owned property on service accommodation should be doing about a grand a month on average across the year. Um, rent to rent, you make a bit less, but you know, all my own stuff, I do typically earn, you know, that type of money. So, um, so you're bringing in nine times 2,300 quid or, you know, effectively you're going to be making about 10 grand profit. Now the fact is you're going to actually, sorry, we haven't done the costs, have we up here? So no, we need to chuck a few more. Yeah, bits so you're going to have to do, um, so it was 4,200 quid mortgage divided by nine. So 466 each uh, for the yeah for your mortgage, and then obviously take out your rent at 425 because it's not a a rental. Um, when when if you are doing a BRR analysis um, and it is in column D, it should filter through to this column D for the mortgage payments and stuff. But don't right. worry about it now. Um, uh, great council tax, power, water rates, cleaning. Uh, yeah, Lynn and I are needs to go in there so you. There's a formula obviously kicked out. Just copy that 185 formula in the box next to it and then just cut and paste it back in. Yeah. There you go. Uh, insurance, probably about 19 quid. Uh, um, channel manager, what, 15 quid. Uh, property management fees. I mean, you can, you can if you want, you could. Uh, equal your gross revenue times 15% if you were going to get it managed. So it would be equals um, D60. All right, okay. Um... Equals D60 times, yeah, 15%. I'll put on there. Um, 
I wouldn't worry about that TV license. You probably get a job lot one as well, five quid probably put in there. Um, and what else we got? Investor funds, interest, furniture loan, repayments, OTA commissions. Yeah, so so that's pretty much the, the bulk of your costs. All right, okay. Um, so uh, actually, on this, the furniture. Can I take these out or? Um, um, it doesn't need furniture. No, it doesn't. It comes for well, it comes furnished as is in the photos, you know. Yeah, and, no, uh, just take all that out if it's. You, I mean, you might want to put a grand in just. Yeah. You might want to just put your own little spin on it, tidy each room up, whatever it might yeah. be. Oh, um, yeah. So scroll down now. Um, let's just see where we're at. So thirteen nine two hundred. So you now you so your profit's now two hundred sixty six quid a unit. Um. 2300 quid running costs 1808 but 226 so um i mean you can you can already see this there's a lot of what i would say over costs in there like for example you've got business rates in there at 100 quid a unit well that that probably won't be the case because the business rates to the building divided by nine yeah. will be less so there's 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 a there's a lot of upside wiggle room in the figures that you've just done there so for me it would be um you know, we then have the seasonality factors. So, so the, the first box there where it says 266, that's kind of just a, a quick snapshot based on a sort of 21 days booked. Um, yeah. You know, that looks like that at those rates. What your seasonality then does is it works off the rates and the O stands for occupancy and the R stands for the rate. So okay. the O will be like, I can't, is it 65% or 85% in the January Plus, uh, so, yeah, um, plus plus your rate at 85%. So basically that's 85% of the 100 quid yeah. or the 125 quid. So those, um, what you want to do is try and average those out. You'll obviously see January is oh, yeah. normally a pretty shit month, to be fair. This November, December aren't the best. But then you start to build from February onwards and then you have like June, July, August or July and August specifically that are really good. Um I would imagine in July and August, you'll be almost 95% booked at probably 125% of the rate. Um, especially on like, a, I mean, that just screams sort of wedding venue, small wedding venue yeah. type thing, doesn't it? You know, so um, so you're going to be, y- your rates, you want to play around a bit with your occupancy and your rates, but if you just work on 70% on average, um, you'll be there okay. and thereabouts. And then, I mean, I don't know what that's totaling up uh, as a gross profit. It's about eight grand a year, isn't it? So, Something like that. yeah. So, um, that um, that's on one unit, you know, which probably isn't a million miles away from the truth. Times that by nine, and you know, you, you you've got yourself probably a hundred grand a year net profit business. Yeah. I mean, what, what did they say the turnover was in the last six months? Uh, one four seven zero four one. Uh, 100, 150 grand, give or take. Yeah, so you times it by two. So they've got 300 grand turnover. The cost probably 30, 40, 40%, so 60% of that. You know, you're not a million miles away. Yeah, you know, miles and off. you put some you put some tweaks on there. If you took the management back in house, obviously you'd save save a bit of money there. Um, so there's there's definitely upside potential in that for sure. Uh, why one thing that would scream out to me is why they're selling it. Uh, they're doing it again, essentially. So it's a husband and wife who developed it. Uh, there's another church somewhere close. It's a bit bigger. They want right. to sell this one and do it again, apparently. Um, so th- th- that's the reason that I've been given. Um, probably a million, probably a million miles know. away from the truth, but you'll never <laughs> find out what the truth is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I understand it's... Uh, it's a lot of capital to put into a deal based on like a 65% uh, loan to value mortgage at that asking price, you know, but essentially what it does is. So what's your payback there? So you've got um, uh, what you're going to have to put into a two point, what was it? 2.2 you thought you might get. It that was going to be kind of thing. Yeah. So uh, it, there's going to be like seven, give or take seven, 70 in it or something like that. Yeah. Times 35. Uh, 2.2 35% deposit one yeah, yeah so 770 yeah so it's, it's probably eight, 800 850 all in 
I mean, and 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 you're going to be it's and you're going to be making what? Uh, like you said, give a tech hundred a year. I mean, yeah. So it's it's 15, going to take you about eight years to get your full money back. But you know, but, but in terms of investment, you know, that I suppose it's like a what fifteen ish percent ROI yeah. or something. So yeah. it's. Uh, yeah. Essentially, when you look at it like that, it's uh, it's actually not that bad. No, um, no. And I think you've probably, I mean, I don't know whether you've got scope on the land to put some glamping tents and things like that on and maximise the occupancy, you know, and try and just maximise the space. Obviously, depending on whether it's heritage and things like that, you'll have to check that out. Yeah. The planning. But there's loads of creative ways that you can, you know, maximise space in these things. You might get in there and you know figure out that you can get a couple of extra bedrooms out of some of the places, or you know you could. They, they might have a sofa bed in that sleeps one. You might be able to get a sofa bed in that sleeps two. You know, so there's there's always ways you can. And I think the figures there are very conservative. You know, at the end of the day, we've we've done a hundred and hundred and twenty odd quid a night based on basically a bog standard Airbnb flat in the middle of Redden. Whereas yeah. this has got it's a unique thing, isn't it? And let's be honest, if it looks a bit out of the way. So if someone's going to get married there, more than likely they're going to take all nine rooms. So basically you can charge what the hell you want because it's they're not they're, they're buying into that for their experience in the wedding day rather than just a contractor wanting to stay there for the week, like for the week, yeah. to, you know. So I think there's a lot of stuff you could probably do with it. In terms of the building, um, you will... Um, you might no, you probably can't. Um, you sometimes you might be able to get a commercial refinance on day one based on the revenue. Okay. But it, pretty much what they're selling it for is about that figure. So um, what you might look out on with is if you if if the, if it is overpriced, then the value will obviously downvalue it, and and not give the mortgage on the two point four or two point two, and they might say, listen, this is only worth one point seven. Yeah, and that might then realign the owner because ultimately everybody's going to have that same problem. Yeah, you know, so the owner's got to come, especially when you're in the higher ticket items. The owners have to be more realistic of, like the most people are going to get funding to fund that. So if the lenders aren't prepared to fund two point four, two point seven, or whatever it is, then they're going to end up stuck with that building unless they reduce their expectations and come down to what the mortgage lenders are saying it's worth. Um. As a quick guide of what it's worth, you could probably go to... Have you got property data? No. No. So property data is a good tool. Um, you might... Uh, let me just... I'll do my bit on my end. Whilst, uh, so basically with property data, do you know what the square footage of the, the building is? Uh, I, I do, yeah. But whether it's on this document... One, uh, yeah, 4,900 square foot. Okay, give me a second. So... Basic property data is just a bit more of an advanced tool for analyzing um, analyzing. Um, you want me to ditch my screen so you can? Yeah, you can do if you want. Yeah, I might need that uh, postcode, but oh, sorry, yeah. so property data. Um, ba -ba -ba. Um, evaluate uh, pound for valuation. Uh, that's not what I want. Let's change all the uh, things on the same time. Postcode data. Uh, what was the postcode again? Yeah, it's a uh, RG seven one LD. So average blended is three hundred eighty-eight pound a square foot. Okay. Which uh, it was four thousand. Four thousand nine hundred. So it's worth one point nine million. Okay. As a bricks and mortars total rough guide. I mean, listen, property data is not like the Bible, so you you can never swear by this when you, you know, especially for people doing you know little of BRRs. You know, this is a lot more sensitive um, yeah. than. You know, I would still probably also, you know, jump on right move. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, for sale.
RG7. One ND, wasn't it? Uh, one LD. LD. Get it right eventually. Okay, so there's nothing immediate. So we've got a quarter of a mile. Nothing. Half a mile. Quite isolated then, really, isn't it? Oh, here we go. One mile. Okay, so what we now want to do is refine this. So we want to go, let's just assume they're like one bed flats. Okay. So it's going in. Okay, so one mile away, we've got one bed flats, 225s, 216s, 212s, 210s. So, you know, you say you got nine at 200 grand. You know, really I'm in you, you know, you're not a million miles away. You, you, it's it's probably worth that 1.8 to 2 million quid mark, I would say. Yeah. Um, they'll they'll be they're basing their figures based on the trade and history. I think they're doing it on the current pipeline based. You know, um, the, the no, value you put, on the when, when you've been trading two years as a SA business, you can get a commercial refinance based on your revenue, not based on bricks and mortar. Very right. much like you would on a commercial space. Yeah. Uh, you do the same on HMOs, but you can actually do it from day one on HMO. But because SA isn't so much a proven model as HMOs and it has a lot more variables, it, um, you have to have your own trading accounts for two years. So uh, to give you an example of the building that I'm developing, I'm getting 1.2 million quid as a bricks and mortar. But after two years of revenue it'll be worth about 2.7. Oh, right, okay. So it, it really lifts it up. The downside is if you if you go on the SA revenue, you're obviously going to overgear yourself on the bricks and mortar. So if you then want to come out that building and yeah. the next person going in doesn't do SA, then they're not going to be able to potentially get the borrowing. So you might end up overgearing yourself too yeah. much. But I think for me, it's always a case of, look at it at the time and say, well, can I do anything more with that extra money to like grow the portfolio? Like, or is it better just sat as it is? So it's again, that sort of um, decision that you make at the time. But that's one thing that you can do with SA properties once they've been up and running for two years. So you would think that they're probably based on that very, because it's, it's typically an eight times multiplier. So on your gross revenue, sorry, on your net revenue. So it, that's I think they're that's similar to what they, these are running at. I think is they've looked at that. They've probably massaged the figures for the last six months. I wonder yeah. why they've only given you the last six months rather than the last year. I, I, no, I don't know that. I mean, the only thing uh, is is um, they closed for COVID. You know, uh, as as it only just be, finished being refurbished, you know, and that's when it's opened. I'm, I'm unsure, to be honest. That That's the question that um, I've not asked yet. Cool. All right. Well, um... and, and I guess just one more question. Sorry. Sorry. Um, is obviously this is a lot of capital to invest in one project like that, that potentially we know what the potential returns could be. Do you believe that investing it in just building an SA business would generate more revenue by putting that amount of cash in, but obviously would just take a lot longer, if that makes sense. Yeah, so you're saying like if, if you were to put 2.2 .2 million quid into, into other yeah. stuff? Into uh, so smaller units, you know, uh, let's just say a, a, a selection of smaller units to that value. Um, yeah would you generate more revenue from those as you would from this? But obviously this is kind of turnkey ready and capital from day one, as opposed to spending, yeah. 20, you know, 12, 24 months building that. Um, yeah. So I don't know that, that, what would you do in that situation? Yeah. I mean, like you could probably buy the whole of Gateshead with 2.2 .2 million. <laughs> so, you know, and uh, really, it, you know, a, a one bed, like I've got one bed as in, you know, Newcastle that cost me probably 50 grand to acquire, and they'll do you know, in the summer months, they're doing north of 2k, really. In the winter months, they're doing like 12, 1300 quid, but the mortgages on them are like 90 quid and 110 quid, you know. So, yeah. you know, you could say, well, 
depending on the location, what can what else can you get? Basically, what you want to say is, can I get more than nine units for two point two million? Oh well, I suppose one hundred percent you can, can't you? Do you know? And, and uh, because the units are only, I mean, as well as the bedroom revenue there, I'd imagine is the food and beverage and a bar and stuff like that as well. So there's probably other upsells that you can actually click from. But yeah. if you want to just concentrate on being an SA business rather than being a hospitality business, yeah, then, yeah. then you might say, well, 2.2 million, I could buy 20, 30 houses, two bed flats, whatever there might be. You know, you could potentially throw some of the bigger units in there, which do well. Like we've got yeah. five bed houses that do, you know, four or five grand a month comfortably nearly every single month because the contractors are in there, you know. And then the bigger parties come in at the weekend. So it's, you could say, well, I could probably get a wider portfolio and have them all running um, to create more revenue. So, and less risk, I suppose. Yeah, more diversified, you know, less risk. You'll probably increase the costs because it's easier to manage something in one place. That's why I like blocks of stuff now. Okay. So, you know, like if I, if I could have something in a block, I'd rather have five apartments in a block than five houses dotted around because your yeah. cleaners are running around in cars and blah, 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 rather than just being in one location and they just go up and down and then they're done. Yeah. So, um, but at the same time, I guess depending on where the funds are coming from, if, you, if you've got the funds to buy that and then you're still going to be left with funds to buy other stuff, then it's, as you say, it's a ready-made business. It's there. You're not having to put the graft in to turn them around. It's, you know, it's, it's done, it's dusted. And, you know, I've, I've definitely learned from that mistake this year of, you know, my development. I could have had that cash flow and from, you know, February if I just bought a building that was ready-made. Whereas I'll be lucky if I get it open for 2024 at this rate, you know? So, <laughs> like, it's, it's that whole conundrum, isn't it, that you're always playing with yourself in the property game. Yeah. Um, so, but if you've got access to capital and you've got that deal which can you know you can get it going and, and that's fine and you can just box that off and run it and then you've still got the ability to move on yeah then i'll do but if that deal is going to be like all of it money's like tied up you know effectively you are tying your dosh up for eight years into that building because it's going to take it that to yeah. get it back out whereas you know you could probably run quite a number of brr smaller scale extensions um you know which is typically what we're doing right now is, uh, you know, I just bought another house today, actually, funny enough, and we're going to be extending the back on that. Now we're having to buy houses at market value. You've just got to think of other ways that you can add value to them to be able to get your money back out. So you're yeah. almost creating your own BRR strategy. Whereas prior to COVID, before the madness, I was literally buying, you know, any rundown property below market value, putting a kitchen or bathroom in, carpets, decorating it, done in two weeks, remortgaged in 10 weeks, and I had my money back out. Yeah. Now we're having to look at like two to four month projects to add a bit of value to be able to uplift it and get the money back out that way. But, you know, that's just where we're at and that's the times we're in and you've got to, you know, you either move forward or you, or you go backwards, right? So that's what we've had to do. So my question to you would be, you know, do you want to do more of that? And can you get more out of that in the long term? Like you could say, I mean, if you look at it strategically, you could probably spin that 2.2 million a lot over an eight year period across a lot of little projects. But obviously it's going to take more bandwidth, more time, more energy, more sourcing, you know, and all that. But you could, you know, realistically, you should turn 2.2 million into probably in eight, in eight years, that should be 10, really, shouldn't it? You know? <laughs> I, was, I was going to say 25, but yeah, <laughs> I, I, I definitely think that that should be, you know, done right, done on a very, you know, creative strategy where you're not getting money stuck and it's just bang, 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 bang. You, you should be able to, to, to really work that money through quite a lot of bricks and mortar. Yeah. No, thank you very much. It's been very informative, that. Is there any questions on that from anyone? And sorry to bore you all with that, by the way, for the last half an hour. No, that, honestly, that, that's the type of stuff that, you know, it really opens up everyone's eyes and, you know, it's just, I'm, I bet everyone's picked up just one thing from that, you know, and um, it, it's just always good to, to demonstrate things like that. So, um, any questions? 
No. Does anyone have any questions about anything? Um, yeah, I've got one actually. Um, so we uh, we went to a viewing yesterday, and we uh, um, speaking with a letting agent, and um, thinking of taking on a, a property. But the issue is um, the landlord um, has got an issue with I think it's the insurance company. Uh, not not sure if like the insurance would cover you know like SA, and like I'm not sure how we would be able to get around that um super easy so um most violet insurances won't cover service accommodation however if you uh ring insurance desk and ask for josh munt and tell him i sent you um he will look after you and he will get the landlord the right insurance they'll probably have to pay nine pounds more a month but worst case scenario just offer to pay the nine quid yeah and it just gets rid of the objection Remember, the insurance is not linked to the mortgage, okay? So some people are like, oh, well, if I'm on the wrong mortgage product, but I've got the right insurance, the insurance company won't pay out. That, that, that's rubbish. Like, the insurance is based on the house, and it, it, it protects the house in the event that it, you know, burns down or, or whatever. So, um, but jo Josh does all my portfolio, does all my SA stuff, very quick, very good, knows exactly what he's doing. And he'll be able to set that up within 24 hours once you've, once you've gotten the details and what he needs. Um, and he can probably ping you a quote within an hour. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, where, where do I get his details? Sorry. Um, I'll type it in the chat. It's insurance um, It's insurance desk and it's Josh Munt. If you just Google it, I think they're, I actually think they're Redden Way, um, maybe. Yeah, I think, I think they are down that way. Um, insurance desk, uh, Josh Munt. He's a great kid. He's a great kid. Okay, thanks, Ryan. I say kid, I've never met him. He could be 65-year-old, 70-year-old, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, cool. Um, any, anything else from anyone? Mikey? Hey, Ryan. Um, just when you were saying about the BRR and you're doing the extensions on the back to get the uplift, what's the, uh, what sort of cost do you gain for the extension and what sort of uplift do you gain? Um, so we will, I mean... The, what we're doing, we've, I'm trying to think what we've just done. I mean, we've just done a one at Durham where we're turning the garage into a studio apartment and we're going to split the title on that. Um, that's going to be about 25 grand, but that's a full garage conversion into a flat or new pipe works and stuff like that as well. Yeah. Moving a few walls and extend it slightly. I think the extension out the back of Kitchener Street will probably cost us somewhere in the region of about 15 to 20. Uh, but I would expect to, so I bought that for, oh, on, I've completed on three deals in the last week. So um, I, I think that if I'm right and thinking this the way I was, I bought that for 142. Um, and I think we're planning to spend about 55, 50, 55 on it, which is a rearrangement inside the extension. Um, we'll turn a three bed into, I think it's a five bed, could even be a six bed. And then we will um it'll be worth about 255 probably try and i'll be cheeky and go for 275 and just expect them to down value it slightly so but you know anywhere in that region of 250 i'm gonna get most if not all my dosh back out um the killer for me is it like delays things like i used to have a 10 10 weeks was how i, I had it so refined to 10 weeks like the minute i got the keys i used to ring my mortgage broker and be like can you apply for the remortgage because I knew my build team, most of my build team would go pick the keys up, they'd go straight to the house, they'd crack on. Ten weeks later, I'd have it refinance money back in the bank. Whereas now I'm having to wait like three, four months to get the money back. Well, it's actually longer than that by the time you okay. add the conveyance and that in there now. But listen, it is what we is. And do you know what? It's like you always look, you always solve a problem from a problem. So, you know, all I do now is, uh, all I've done is basically gone and found more investors to give us more money. So I can continue to buy. So I've not gone, oh, well, I've got to sit and wait for me money now. I've just thought, I need to get more money because I want to continue to acquire at the rate I was acquiring, but my funds are going to run out quicker. So what do I do? I go and, you know, pitch my investment to investors and it's a win-win for everybody. So, you know, you've built the trust up, you show them the projects and, you know, and they're in. So every time I go to Dubai, I have an intention of coming back with money. That's kind of one of my goals. I spend a week a month in Dubai. So one of my goals is I basically go and pimp myself out. I try and go out for meals with as many people as I can and just tell them what I'm doing. 
And, you know, and that's, that's how you find money and that's how you attract it as well. Yeah, play. Cheers, mate. Franka, I like this little hand thing. Yeah, very like school, like, isn't it? <laughs> um, that was a really good thing I, I meant to ask you. So it's good to hear that you go to Dubai for one week a month. At the moment, I'm working one week a month and I, I, I work nights. So um, my schedule goes pear shaped completely. I'm really, I really like my morning routine and I'm super disciplined on many, many things. Uh, I'm equally disciplined when I'm working nights, but my there's always two nights where I really suffer. So that's the first night of the shift and the last night. So that's the first and the seventh night. So um, one thing I wanted to ask you with regards to your nutrition and how you get on about your day, how, how do, what do you do? I mean, I've been doing this for millions of years and with kids and all of that, so you, you just get on with it and that's that. But I'm curious to see if you have any tips or anything for your, when you fly back, your jet lag essentially, um, mm -hmm. and your sleeping pattern, how do you, how do you get back to normal? Yeah. So I kind of, a um, couple of things. One is this whoop band. Yeah. This tells me all my sleep patterns and it tells me how much energy I've got basically. So it'll actually tell me yeah. whether I need to sleep more, whether it's just half an hour. It also tells me um, really important data about like deep sleep and REM sleep. So yeah. I know whether I'm getting the right type of sleep. So then you can change your environment if you're not. And it yeah. could be a case of, you know, saying to the wife, listen, I need to go in the spare room at night. I need to black it out and I need to get some real, you know, good sleep because I'm just not, I'm not getting yeah. where I need to be. When I travel, I, I kind of have a routine now where I know if I, um, so I always fly business class because yeah. it flies overnight and it gets me rested. So um, I'll, we board the plane at half eight and I will tell them I don't want a meal and don't wake me up. I eat before I get on the plane and then I go straight to sleep and then I get my seven hours kick and then mm -hmm. we wake up, it's half seven Dubai time and I kind of just work through the day, I go straight to the office and then I, I try and eat meals at the time of day that it is yeah so you know if it's breakfast i'll eat breakfast if it's lunch i'll eat lunch yes. whenever you yeah, do the same though and you eat that meal even if it's breakfast your time and it's evening meal there yeah you eat evening meal um and then coming back's actually not too bad this way so it lands at half six at night and i just kind of uh force myself to stay up a bit and then i'm tired yeah. and i get my sleep in so but yeah. sleep is Sleep for me is like a lot of people say oh, you need like eight hours, seven. I need six hours, 30 minutes. That's pretty much me optimum. Like if I get six, it's fine. I can manage. If I get any less, I start to suffer a bit, but I don't really need any more than six and a half hours to, to mm. do what I, to do me basically. But I, I've yeah. worked that out off the data um, and, and spotting the patterns. Consistency is always, and, and they're probably going to struggle with your night shift type stuff, but consistency, time to bed, time to wake up is super important in your sleep patterns. Like I am yeah. pretty much bang on. In fact, my report last week was 19 minutes difference between the time I went to bed and the time I slept over a seven day period, uh, woke yeah. up, sorry. So, um, and then just, I, the more I go into my fitness journey um, and my qualifications and stuff around it, I the nutrition side of it is just- It's I essential, can, isn't it? I cannot stress how important it is to eat right and get rid of sugar, get rid of fizzy drinks, get rid of, um, you know, processed foods. And, mm. um, and for me, alcohol, since I've stopped drinking again, I'm just like, I am just feel on fire every day of the mm. week. Um, there's no downtime. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully um, I'll be able to quit my job in a year's time. With your help, I'll get there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think, you know, listen, I, you know, I had a 70 hour a job, week of job, kind of, you know, that I was working in when I built my business out. I just, mm. just had to find pockets of time. I wanted it bad enough. I, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to be what I, what I created now and um, have my own freedom and my own diary. And I, um, I wanted to spend more time with my kids and, you know, so I, I was doing viewings on the way to work. I was doing viewings at lunch hours. I was doing viewings on the way back from work. I was batch viewing on a weekend. I was just doing everything I could to just squeeze things in. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. There was the other occasion where I was sneaking out when I probably shouldn't have been to do a viewing, you know, but I just, you know, did what I did. And, yeah. um, and then that got me to my point, you know, as quick as I could. Yeah. And, then it, and then it gives you that opportunity to then, once you're working in your businesses full time, it's, it's daunting that, that jump. 
but I cannot tell you how much your business accelerates because you're mm. just focused on it all the time. It's just yeah. that's all you've got. So. Mm -hmm. And what time is the meeting on Thursday? Thursday is just a live training session that I'm streaming into the group. Um, most of the stuff that's in there is in Kajabi. That I, it's it's a very twenty minute vanilla type of thing. It'll be I think around twelve thirty one o'clock something like that. All right. It's, it's not into the paid group. It's into the free group. Um, oh, I see. I, I right. wouldn't I wouldn't stress yourself too much about. If you can get on it, great. You might pick a few golden nuggets up, but um, yeah, everything that I'll be going over is in the program. That um, is it. It's just right. a little snippet, basically. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Uh, there is, um, you might have seen the SA Masterclass advertised. Obviously, you guys all are in that. Uh, you're all included in that. Um, date for your diaries as well is the um, 26th, 27th of March. I think it is. Let me just bring the diary up. Um, uh, we will be doing our uh, in-person um, mastermind um, Google Calendar. I'm pretty sure I booked the 26th. Yeah, 26th and 27th, which is a Saturday and a Sunday. Um, we're doing a two-day two day event on that one. Where is this? That will be in Geordie Land, also known as Newcastle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, and if, um, if people are coming up on the Friday as well, if there's enough people, then, you know, maybe we can arrange a meal or something like that, and we'll, we'll head out and get some, get some food as well. So you, you can kind of make a... Um, a full weekend of it. Brilliant. I'll be there. Cool. Um, any any more questions before we shoot? Yeah, sorry, Simon. Yeah, shoot. Um, so I'm splitting my time at the moment between uh, Geordie Land and then and the uh, Kajabi Masterclass. So I'm just wondering if you could maybe give me some ideas on where to focus in my. Uh, um, I'm spending probably about two thirds of my time up here. I don't know what's the name of that person's time back at home. Yeah, I mean, what what is the acquisition strategy that you're trying to deploy? Rent to rent or? Yeah, rent to rent to start, yeah. Um, I mean, it, probably both is the honest answer, you know, because you want to be trying to just do it all the time, every time, you know, at the end of the day, once you've acquired the property and got it set up, the, the systems and processes can be run remotely. Um, I would, you know, two thirds of your time you're in Newcastle, well, do what you do when you're in Newcastle. And then when you're in Kent, do what you do down there as well. And, you know, you'll, you'll get a good experience of, you know, different estate agents and how things work in different locations. And, how much friendlier the northerners are than the southerners um but uh, yeah i mean i would just um I, I i wouldn't really focus on a location i would just focus on doing doing as much activity as you can in the locations that you're in um at the time that you're in them and um you know if you've got the chance to you know go on viewings go on them get them arranged get them booked if you know you're in Kent next week and you're in Newcastle this week, we'll start booking viewings in Kent next week. And then obviously vice versa when you're coming back to Newcastle and then make sure you attend them when you're there and start analyzing them. And I kind of, I kind of stress the importance of viewings and activity levels. Like right now, all the, wherever you are, if you're sub 50 properties, all you want to do is just, just view, just get on viewings, like rental viewings, asset buying viewings, just get on them, you know, as much as you can and just open up conversations with landlords, open up conversations with estate agents. And all it takes is, you know, all it takes is one agent, you know. I, my, my first trip back to Dubai after lockdown, my intention was to meet as many agents as I could. So I teed up loads of viewings for that first few days. I think it went on something like 47 or 48 viewings. But one of the agents that we met, we've had something like 20 four units out of him or something now and he constantly brings units to us now 
I don't need to go and see them anymore. I just trust that he brings them. He knows what we want. We've had a few in-depth conversations. He knows that I benefit him. He benefits me. He flashes us them on WhatsApp. We go, yep, good, let's go. And then we send the team in to set them up. So at this stage now, which is the building stage, is just about finding those golden people that will then constantly feed you with stuff. Because once you've put the effort in to find them, then, then you can start taking your foot off the accelerator if you want and you, the deals will still come in. Because if you can't find them, you've always got to be looking for deals. You know, it could just be one agency that really buys into you and wants to work with you and, you know, you've taken a few deals off them so they'll give you a few more and, you know, and that, that's all you need to find really. And that gets you up and away and then the rest of it is just, it's just systems and processes and then just building your team around you to do more of it. Make sense? Yes, one, thank you. Awesome. Right, yo. I'm gonna uh I need to dive onto my uh my show now. So um I love yous and leave yous. And uh, if anyone needs anything, uh ping them in. Homework for this week is to try and complete those two tests if you can. And uh, it'd be great if we can either discuss them in the chat throughout the week or even bring them on on next week and we can go over a few and just have a little recap and see what um Define your sort of top five strengths from both the tests, have them written down and let's figure out, you know, how you can then use those strengths. Uh, what we'll probably do is go into breakout sessions with each other and discuss our strengths. And then you just never know partnerships might form or people might be able to, you know, align with you or, or even just give you recommendations on how you can improve those strengths or um, who you can potentially speak to. So um, really important. But thanks for everything and i will um i'll see you next week take care